life coach, mentor, and speaker. She's passionate about equipping women to experience authentic life change for the sake of impacting the next generation. She is the founder of More to Be, an organization dedicated to equipping moms, engaging teens, and encouraging mentors. She is also the author of Impact My Life, Biblical Mentor and Simplified. Um, and it's on special today, today only for $10 over there. If you would order it after today, it would be $11, so save a dollar today. Um, and she has a growing number of Bible studies for teen girls. So if you have teen girls, teen girls coming up, you might want to take a look at them. And a life coaching resource for women entitled Equipped because you can make so women to help. Um, you can also find her writing for the better moms, mothers of daughters and mothers from scratch, and contributing to Christian Mingle's YouTube channel. <laughs> um, Elisa considers her first calling in life as a wife to her husband, Stephen, and mother to her household and children. She has Leah, who's 14, Abby, who's 12, Eve, who's 8, and Kayla, who's 8, and she's going to be twins. That's not right there. That told me a lot about it right there. <laughs> she and her family live at the Stony Brook School, where her husband has worked for the last 17 years. And Elisa's favorite days begin on the porch with the Lord and end on the beach with her family and friends. So thank you for coming out.
put away. I have an overflowing laundry basket next to my dresser that needs to be brought down. It's too heavy for me to carry, so my husband will have to haul it down. I need to divide it into two baskets to get it downstairs. In my, I'm sure there's a wet load in the washing machine. There's at least two in, in the den that need to be folded, and there's another in the dryer. This is my life, and as soon as I finish folding all my laundry, I think, I'm done. No, I go upstairs. I'm not ever done. And this is our life as moms. This is our life as Christians. We are not ever done. The scriptures say that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. You're not done until you see Jesus face to face. Your journey isn't going to get any easier. Sorry, I had to say that. It's not, okay? You're going to move through seasons. And so if you're living with a mentality that says, I just need to get this one thing done, then I'll be okay. If I just say, I just need to get through tomorrow, then I'll be okay. Tomorrow isn't going to be okay. So you have to figure out for yourself in the season you're in, how are you going to find periods of rest? Where are you going to find your refreshment? How are you going to get a perspective change? And honestly, laundry is a great opportunity because for me, right now, laundry folding happens in the evening, and that's when I get to watch House Hunters International and pretend like I'm someplace else. It's great. It's a half hour. I can get three loads folded in that time if I'm moving. And now it's not just laundry folding, it's laundry folding and something I enjoy doing. There have been times where I have chosen to pull up the iPad or my computer and watch a sermon. There's some great teachers out there that have really wonderful. Uh, Brad Bigney has a video that you can watch. He's out of, no, I forget. Just if you Google Brad, Brad Bigney, his sermons are videoed and they're really rather entertaining. Um, Methodist Fellowship has a pastor, Brian Loritz. Put it up, get fed. You're folding along, you're taking care of your family. But at the same time, you are then taking in the word and you're able to then live that out because you know on Sunday mornings, your brain's not really there. You're wondering, is the number going to flash up on the screen and I need to go get my kid? You know, or you're thinking, what do I have to do when I get home at the end of the day? Or will I get that nap? Or will they take a rest? Or what, what do I have to get done? So rather than trying to fit into the formula that we have to live in in the rhythms of our day, what about if you looked at your own rhythms and tried to reclaim silence, reclaim the periods of rest and refreshment? Do you see what I'm saying on this? So, so we have laundry. That's one thing. Uh, exercise. I consider exercise to be an awful idea. I don't like to sweat. I mean, that's just who I am. But I don't want to have a heart condition and, and miss out on the life that God has given me to live because I haven't taken care of my body. So I do it as a matter of discipline. And I want to encourage you. This, this was a very funny moment. My kids were home. The eight-year-olds were home for spring break. And I couldn't go to the gym. Most of you probably can't go to the gym. You can't afford the gym. The kids cry in the gym. It's not worth getting to the gym. So find a way to then, in the rhythm of your life, to build the exercise in with them in a different frame of mind. So I found this YouTube video on how to walk. I, you know, we all need to learn how to walk, right? So I'm in, I'm in my bedroom with the iPad and the, the sneakers on, and the kids are there watching me do this video. And they're like, Mom, go like this. And like, they're telling you what to do. And you know, some people might say I'm neglecting my kids because I'm not entertaining them. But I I was entertaining them while they watched me do the video. And what was so funny was Luke and Caitlin told Abby, their older sister, Mommy did an exercise video today. And Abby's like, Mom, remember when you used to do that when Leah and I were like two and four and you'd take us over to the Austin's house and you and Mrs. Austin would do an exercise video and we'd play in the other room while you did that? I was like, that was a really long time ago. Yeah, I have been exercising for 14 years. But, but it's not been the same way every year. There's been seasons where I push strollers. There's been seasons where I get to go to Zumba. So look at your life and, and your self-care in the context of how can I incorporate the kids into it and not feel neglectful because I'm not, I'm not entertaining them right then and there. They'll be entertained by you exercising, basically. So, so in this concept of rediscovering the beauty of silence, my encouragement to you is that God calls us in Psalm 46.10 to be still and know that I am God. But the problem with 
being a mom of a preschooler or an infant or a teenager is there's not much stillness in your schedule. So you have to start looking at your schedule in terms of what, what I call being transformed, Romans 12.2. It says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So would it do not be conformed to the patterns of this world? <coughs> so as you look at what's going on around you, and your friends are signing up for this activity, and they're, they're taking their kids to that activity, and they're doing this thing to you. <coughs> Thank you, sorry. <laughs> to be asking yourself, what is good for my family? What is good for me? What can I logistically do, emotionally do, and mentally do? Rather than trying to fit into the pattern that your mom says is right, that your sister says is right, that your best friend's doing, that the mom's group at your table is doing, look at your schedule and start saying, what is our family priority? And how does this work for me or guess me. Am I the screaming mom trying to get the kids out the door so that they could get to their sport? Or am I the loving mom sitting while the kid is playing in the backyard? In, in 20 years from now, do you think that that child wants to remember that they got to baseball on time but you were mad at them? Or do they want to remember mom was really chill while I was playing in the backyard and she was super loving to me when I came in with a boo-boo because I wasn't stressed out. And so, you know, right now, where is my baseball? Okay. This is our life tonight. My older girls have sports, but they're on their own because it's part of their school program. My eight-year-old daughter needs to be at gymnastics at 5.30. My son needs to be at baseball at 6. My son needs to be picked up at baseball at 7.15. My daughter needs to be picked up from gymnastics at 7.30. I'm supposed to be at a meeting with my husband at 7.15, and we only have one car. <laughs> that, 10 years ago, would have sent me into a hysterical tailspin of frustration. But I have been learning through parenting and through God, giving God access to my heart, to my worries, to my fears, of saying to him, Lord, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Rather than like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm so stressed out, I don't know how to get everybody everywhere, putting that burden on my family, putting that burden on my husband, saying, Lord, how am I going to do this? What's the priority? Maybe it means the kids don't go anywhere tonight because I have to be at the meeting. Maybe it's I don't go to the meeting. Maybe it's Katie needs to be picked up early. Maybe Luke needs to be picked up early. I still don't know because maybe it will rain and there won't be baseball. Okay? I do pray for men sometimes. And God offers his favor that way. <laughs> and I love my son playing baseball. But I also have to say, Katie only started gymnastics last January, and Luke only started baseball was that one spring ago. Okay? We did not enroll our kids into things when they were little because of a couple of things. I did that with Caitlin, and I did that with Leah and Abby, and it wasn't their passion. It wasn't something they wanted to do. So I was doing a lot of running around with them and missing out. So when Caitlin and Luke were born, we basically put in all bars on activities. The girls stopped their activities. The twins had no activities. We had nothing that we did for two years. Two years, no activities. We hosted small group in our home. That was the only thing that we did. And we chose to host small group in our home because I could nurse the babies in their bedroom and still be able to have people in the in the house and come in and out of it rather than the stress of trying to figure out how many get these babies where I need to get going. So looking at your schedule, I like to call all this stuff noise. Okay? The laundry, the exercise, the kids running around, um, the baby crying, you can't drop her. Okay? <laughs> the Sticky hands on the walls that need to be cleaned off. And you think, I stink out of the home keeper. I can't get my sink clean. I can't get my walls clean. If anybody walked into this house right now, what would they think of me? I don't know how many of you struggle with that. I struggle with that. Those fingerprints on that wall are evidence that life is being lived. So every single thing in your life is a matter about reframing it 
with an eternal perspective. Is that jelly fingerprint there because my child doesn't have a food allergy and can enjoy that? Thank you, God, that that is something I can give you glory for. The dust bunnies on my stairs is because I have a golden retriever that my daughter desperately wanted. And this is part of her life story of God providing this dog. Even though I look at those dust bunnies and think, why did we get this dog? You know, everything has to be framed in the context of what God is doing in your life. And, and I, I have this context because I didn't grow up as a Christian. I'm first legacy, first generation Christian. I'm building a new legacy for my family. I come from a family of dysfunction and abuse. I come from a family uh, that was broken. I love my parents dearly. I do. They laid down their life for me. But they had no support system in place. And the way they raised me and my sister is not how I wanted to raise my family. So I've had to learn everything from the ground up. I've had to learn, God, what does it mean to be a godly mom? What does it mean to be somebody that honors you? What does it mean to speak life into my children? And one of those things, to speak life into my children, was stepping down off a of women's ministry when my Abby was eight years old. And I had waited my whole adult Christian life to be asked to be on women's ministry. You know, I had been active in Bible study. I was planning activities. Every time I would be for a meeting, which happened once a month in the evenings, and then there was always the activity, which was once a month in the evenings, Abby would have a meltdown. And if there was a phone call that had to be happened once a month in the evenings, she wanted me to tuck her into bed and wanted me to cuddle with her. That's it. But I don't cuddle. That's not my thing. Don't touch me. You know? <laughs> I, I like my personal space. But I had this child that God gave me that for her, cuddling was like oxygen. It was, this was her breathing time. And she's not a verbal processor, but this was her verbal processing time. And I wrestled back and forth with God. Do I have to step down from this? Don't I have to continue to serve in ministry? Don't I need to continue to, with my obligation? And, and by God's grace, he spoke to my husband. He spoke through the Holy Spirit working in me. I stepped down from that ministry position and made a commitment that until my daughter does not need to come home anymore, and that may be when she's a freshman in college, <laughs> I, I will not make evening commitments. I'm a life coach. I don't take evening clients. I've tried it. It doesn't work. I've been on the Raising Generations Today planning committee, evening meetings. I'm stepping down. I need to guard that time for my family. And the rest of the world might say, you know what? She's 12 years old. She needs to get over this. I'm sorry. If God made her with this need, and he made me to be her mom, and this is the way this need is met, who am I to tell the world that they're right and to tell God and my child that they're wrong? I only have six more years to cuddle with her. And, you know, I have to go there with this because I have this little sock hanging on our refrigerator. There's an, I put a magnet inside of it. I found it in the laundry, probably. We have a sock basket. Does anybody else have a sock basket? Where did it go? It's just like a monthly match of socks. It takes an hour, and we still have half a basket full. So this was in the sock basket. And, and the Lord really came to me, you need to remember, those little feet aren't coming back. You only have them this size for right now. And I rushed my first 10 years of parenting. I really did. I just wanted them to move on and get on with the rest of my life. And it's because it's hard. I'm not a natural mother. I don't like getting on the floor playing games. I didn't do it very much. We'd cuddle, we'd tickle. My attention span for a puzzle is about five minutes. You know, I, I, I'm a business-minded person. I'm a let's see progress type of person. So motherhood has been very, very hard for me. But I look back on it and think, darn it, I didn't really, really enjoy it with Leah or Abby. I did with the twins because there was a perspective change. With four years between them, I was able to see how fast children grow. So, so there's this picture that I keep in my office closet. I love it. You can go any direction. But it's Luke and Caitlin and Leah and Abby, and the, the babies were probably um, a month old when we took this picture. And it's the, it, this is something else, side note here, leave the baby pictures out. Don't put them all away. I used to replace with the most current picture. If you're going to have clutter in your house, maybe photos of your children. 
Because the children look back and they remember the stories of what was going on in the family when they looked at They remember the girls remember tie down in these t-shirts and onesies. Katie is wearing, Katie is now wearing Leah's t-shirt. And so this past week, I was at this concert. My, we've been at the Sternberg School for 17 years. I've sat in the same theater for 17 years. I've envisioned my children moving through the ranks. And I'm sitting in the, in the theater. Katie's on one side of me, snuggled up next to me, and stretching at the same time, trying to see what was going on. My older daughter was behind me, sitting with her friends. Reasonable at this age. My middle daughter, Abby, was on stage singing. And in that moment, I could have cried the ugly cry and wrecked the whole concert. Because I realized I have 10 years left. In 10 years, Luke and Caitlin will have sung their last song on that stage. My daughter, my older daughters probably will be beyond college, maybe married. Maybe I'll be Yaya, which is what I want to be called when I'm grandma. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the Lord's plans are. But all I know is I'm at the halfway point. I've done 10 years, and I've got 10 more years to go. And, and you, can't, you can't wait to find the silence. You can't wait to find the rest. You can't wait to find the beauty. It's going to slip by you. So what you need to do in your life right now is not look to do more, but look to say no to more. Look to say yes to your children while they are in your house because the theory that you're going to lose your career or your identity or your purpose if you give up all these things is not really true. I mean, who I was 14 years ago, I am not who I am now. I was a yelling mom then, I'm not a yelling mom now. I was in, in advertising and admissions then, I am writing and speaking now. Who I was is constantly being transformed to the likeness of Christ and the character of God. And with that, my passions and desires are changing. And at the overflow of being a mom, who you are is ever-changing. And so your opportunity to be a mom now and to soak in this time is the richest time in your life. In 10 years, 20 years from now, the world is going to be a different place. Who you are will be a different person. But what memories you've built with your children are irreplaceable. Those they will take and continue to take. You know, and so I, I just really want to encourage you to look at, in the, in the discussion questions, what, I'm asking you, what is the noise in your life? What is drowning on hearing the voice of God? What is taking you away from listening to your children laugh and instead causing you to be like, would you just be quiet? What is causing you to not be intimate with your husband? Because... You're too tired at the end of the day. Are there too many things on your plate? And you need to back off your standard of expectations. And as a life coach, one thing I do with my, my clients is ask questions that help them figure out, okay, it doesn't have to be black, it doesn't have to be white. Where's the gray? So, so I had a client who felt she needed to cook organically for her family. The point of it was a health need that she had to do this. She was, it was taking her hours each week to fix her meals. She was getting ready to go away on a two-week vacation. She was short on time. My question to her, what would be a halfway compromise? How could you do this slightly different? Not give up what's important to you, but figure out a new way to do it. And, and the idea we came up with was to get one of those honey roasted chickens from the superstores because at least it was natural and not you know, processed food, but, but it saved half the time from cooking the chicken from scratch. So to be looking at your life and saying, what am I doing that doesn't need to be done this way? In order to make time, all right, here's the big one, to sit quietly with God for five minutes every day. And honestly, that's what changed my heart. That's what changed my life. It's not that I changed my schedule. It's not that God gave me twins. It was that I had a friend kick me in the pants and say, get God off your to-do list and spend some time with him. And it was as simple as, reading a chapter of scripture a day. And in a journal, writing down one verse. And it was amazing. After five years of doing that, I read through the whole Bible, and suddenly I knew verses that were in songs that are actually from the Bible. You know, it's not just a great worship song. It's a worship song that has context in the richness of scripture. So if it means you have to set your alarm five minutes earlier than that normal wake-up time for your baby, then 
can do that. I never did that. I, I wanted every last second of sleep. So I just, I'm telling you, so what I did when they were all little, they would go down for their nap, and I'd leave the kitchen sink full of dishes, and I wouldn't fold the laundry, and I wouldn't return a phone call, and I would sit down on the couch with a cup of tea and take 10 minutes to be with Jesus. It doesn't have to fit into somebody else's formula. It needs to fit into your formula. With God, he has made you his child. By, by his love, he has shaped you and formed you. And if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord, believing that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, why wouldn't you want to go sit with him and say, oh, Jesus, I have this mess, I'm getting it to you. I have this dream, will you carry it for me? I have this weakness, will you be my strength? I have this brokenness, will you please heal it? That's like your best moment as a mom. Because when you take care of yourself, you are now ready when that child wakes up screaming from their nap or calling, Mommy! Mommy! Mom! Oh my word. Get me the baby gun. I'm sorry, that drove me nuts. But having a Jesus perspective on that screaming made me go like this. Okay, God, I'm going up. Please have me nice by the time I get there. And I walk in the room, and, and I really believe, you know, live it out, and your feelings will catch up. Hi, honey. I'm oh, so glad you're away. When are you going there again? You know? And that was my, my feeling as a mom. And, and now my children never go to bed. They have homework until 10.30 at night. And I'm looking at them thinking, honey, you used to go to bed at 8 o'clock. When are you going to bed? I'm tired. It's a different stage. It's a different stage. And so, to... I have something for each of you that, that's free. Uh, I prefer to give things away, but my husband tells me I can't give everything away. Uh, over on the table there, there are these little cards. One side says life coaching on it. That's just what I do if you're interested in that. But really, the back side is called the Overflow Bible Study and Time Management Method. And you can take this and stick it in your Bible and you know, in a journal, and it can give you a very loose structure to get you going in a quiet time with God. And, and, and to do that, because that's where the first rest is going to come from. The, the scriptures talk to us that, that Jesus is our rest. Our peace comes from Him. Our perspective comes from Him. So that's the first starting point. The second point that I, I would say that you need to do before you get practical here, you need to triage your schedule. You need to triage your life. And on elisapilliam.com, there is a resource, um, it's actually, you can find it in the post that's up especially for you guys today. Um, I think it's under the time management balance key. A way to evaluate your schedule and all your commitments and begin to prayerfully seek God for what needs to be removed. And maybe it's you need to consolidate your errand running day to one day a week. Maybe you need to team up with a friend and you take her kids for two hours while she shops, and then you take her kids for two hours, and vice versa, okay? Um, maybe you need to think, how many of you have smartphones, okay? Something I did three weeks ago, I turned off my Facebook notifications. Because I'm the type of person, if you give me a little number, I feel like I have to respond. So if it says three, I'm like, oh, what's that three about? I don't have notifications there, so now I'm only checking when I have time to check. I don't check my email before my children leave for school. Maybe for you, it's don't check your email until they go down for their nap. Or maybe you get up an hour earlier and your husband, maybe if he's available, gets them out of bed and you check there and then you shut the lid afterwards. So to begin to think differently about the input that's coming into your life, to carve out what I call like margin space or room for nothingness. And here's the other thing. There's a great Bible study called Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. He says in it, don't ask God what is your will for my life. Ask him, Lord, show me your work so that I may join you in it. So to each day when those feet hit the ground and you're like, coffee now, don't talk to me until I'm done. You can be praying, God, show me your will for today, your work for today, that I may join you in it. Here's what I hope to get done. Lord, what is your will for me to get done? And the, you need to have room in your schedule for the unexpected. Then you won't be freaking out when the schedule gets rearranged. 
And you'll be able, that prayer will change your perspective so that when your schedule does get rearranged, now you're looking at it and thinking, okay, God, you, you, I asked you to order this day. This is not going according to my plan. What, go, what gives, what goes, what needs to change? So, so those are some of the practical concepts. I have a bunch of resources on lisapulliam.com. You go, most of them are free. They're downloads, they're articles, they're ideas for how to live intentionally. And I want to close with this one last thought. I feel very certain that the Lord has given me a way to live that I think is, is applicable for all moms. It may not resonate with you, but it's worked really well with me. And I picture it like a pitcher filled up with water. And I'm that pitcher, and in order to be filled up, I need to be filled with God. I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I need to be filled with the Word, so that I can then pour out. But the first people I'm supposed to pour out to is my husband and children, and I call it overflowing. I want to be so filled up by God and His eternal perspective that the splash over is filling, filling, filling my, my family. And, and from the filling of my family, once they are filled up, then I feel released by God with their blessing to then go beyond. So beyond for me would be you know, my business or my ministry at Morning Beat or coming here to speak with you this morning. I had it. My older girls got up this morning to get the girl, the twins ready to get out of the house. And, and they didn't do that. They're 14 and 12. There was no grumble. They set their alarms. They got up early when they could have slept in late. They were downstairs fixing hair, making sure lunch boxes were ready. Because they feel so filled up by me caring for their needs that they don't mind stepping in and sending me forth to bless. There's no bitterness in them for me to go and serve because they feel so cared for. And there are days that they don't feel cared for, and that's the red flag to me, up, oh, back up. Can't, can't get them doing too much. And when they feel satisfied, then I get to go and do more. And then once my, like I see it like a bullseye, once my community feels fed, and I'm meeting the needs there, then the next. And it's always, God, can I go beyond? But I can't do any of this as a wife, a mom, or beyond if I'm not first at the foot of the cross. And so if you're like, I don't know where to go, I don't know where to start, I feel so overwhelmed, Jesus, just start with Jesus. Just sit with him. Give him time and space to talk with you. And you know, God often tells me, Lisa, shut up. I need to talk to you. <laughs> and you need to sit there with a journal open, or if you're not a writer, just quietly. God, what do you want to say to me? What do you have for me? What do you want to reveal to me about my children? What do you want to reveal to me as, about, as a wife and as a mom? So that I can be that servant that you have called me to be as a mom. And boy, I'm telling you, I'm 14 years in. I have no regrets when it comes to the fact that I've served my family. And that my children and my husband feel well cared for. And it's worth it. It's worth the sacrifices to do that. And I want to encourage you in that. So will you, uh, I want to pray for you guys, and then I think you get to start your discussion question. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time that we could be together. Thank you for the opportunity to encourage these women to be with you, Jesus, and then to also consider the practical side of their schedules and what needs to be uh, transformed in their thinking so that they can be changed in their living God. I love it, God, that you are the changer of lives, you are the changer of hearts. And that we don't have to work hard, we don't have to do more. We just need to sit with you and let you show us what to do next. And God, I thank you for, for the MOPS organization in this church in particular that creates the space and the place for women to turn to for help and guidance and direction. And I ask, Lord, that you would speak into the lives of these mamas, that you would encourage them and bless them, give them energy uh, for the difficult times in their day, give them a joy in their hearts for serving you and for on um, meeting the needs that you have put before them and their children. And I pray, Lord, that uh, no weapon forged against them would prevail, but that you would uh, equip them and call them to your good purpose and complete the work that you've started in them. In Jesus' name, amen.